What's up, everyone? Welcome to today's video. Welcome to the Gamer Dad channel. Thank you very much for tuning in. So, we have an Elden Ring patch, patch 1.03, and the developers have made some really interesting changes to the game, sweeping changes that have inspired a lot of memes from the community, including memes like people calling for Bloodhound Step to get nerfed. Come on, man, quit that. Anyways, the patch notes basically state what the changes are, and I'm sure by now some of you have heard what these changes actually are bringing, but we're going to go through them and we're going to talk about them a little bit. Sorry for the white color that basically almost blinds your eye. It is the color of the web page, and I do not know how to make it a dark theme, but they have stated we're distributing an update to improve the stability of the game and to adjust balance. So there are little, uh, in my opinion, anyways, I'll call technical changes that this would probably bring just better performance overall. And then they really want to adjust balance. They say we apologize for the inconvenience, but please apply the latest update before you enjoy the game. So this is actually a very nice way of doing a patch update. I mean, I've played another RPG that has live, you know, update capabilities, and it doesn't necessarily get nice like this when nerfs are coming. And, you know, one thing about things that are really powerful in single player games in most cases is that there's an enjoyment to it. We'll reach that part here in a little bit. So major changes include the latest update. And so what they've done is they've done uh, kind of an addition to different elements in terms of, you know, the overall game. So what they've done is they've added a function to record an icon and the name of an NPC on the map when you encounter that NPC. So that's actually a quality of life update. It's something a lot of people have been talking about saying, you know, it'd be nice for you to be able to have those things on the map as well. Well, that's a nice change. I'm glad the developers have the time, have the you know, resources to continue to make these changes to the game and just continue to, you know, continue to serve the player base and the community. No one's against something like this. In fact, a lot of the old school hardcore souls players have already beaten this game by now. They also added another NPC called Jar Baron. Bairn, Bairn, whatever. And then they added a new quest phase. They said we added new quest phases for the following NPCs. Dialos or Nefeli Loop, I think that's how you say it. Um, and then Kenneth Height and then the gatekeeper Gus Gustock or whatever it is you want to call the name. And so this is really nice. Now, from what I understand is some people already had, in a sense, completed or they thought they completed some of these uh, NPC quest lines. Apparently, the phases is still continuing in terms of the way they're developing the game. There's still more lore and probably a lot more goodies that probably follow. So if you haven't started these quest lines, and I think this might be the time to start now, and if you already thought you finished it, then you might want to go check it out to see how that actually has come full circle. They've also added some summonable NPCs in multiple locations. So that's actually nice. This is something that I thought was a very good lifeline for the game. They've also increased the number of patterns of objects players can imitate when using Mimic's Veil. And then they added a night background music for some open field areas. These are just quality of life fixes, if you were to ask me. Now, here are a few things regarding balance changes that you're probably here for. And, um, you know, this is something that you are probably thinking to yourself, what all in the world have they done? They have done a lot, but we're going to go through them, you know, little by little. We're going to be talking about them and how they probably are changing the game. So pretty much they fixed the bug that prevented some of the NPCs from taking damage in some boss battles. So this is really nice. Just something to keep the game fair and balanced. They fixed the bug that sometimes prevent the player from obtaining item after boss battle. This is also something that's pretty critical. They fixed the bug that causes dialogue to be skipped. When talking to NPCs and using custom key configurations, fix the bug that causes the player to freeze when riding, fix the bug that causes arcane to scale incorrectly for some weapons. In a situation where player cannot obtain more than two talisman pouches, add a talisman pouch to Twin Maiden Husk Shop line uh, lineup. Okay, that's pretty good because I was only able to obtain um, one in that aspect. So that was a very you know good thing for them to go ahead and in the game. So. The other one is they fix a bug that prevented a user from warping to Sites of Grace from the map at the end of the game. They also fix a bug that prevented a player from moving to the next area after the battle with the Fire Giant. Fix a bug which causes some weapons to have incorrect scaling after strengthening. Fix a bug which causes some weapons to not use stat scaling, which is very nice. Fix hangups in certain occasions. Fix a bug which incorrectly displays multiplayer area boundary when playing online. Fix a bug that allows players to activate Urchery Great Shield's weapon skill without absorbing an attack using a special combination of item and incantation. Whatever the heck that means. Fix a bug which causes fire's deadly sin incantation to have different effect. 
Fix a bug with the Ash of War Determination and Royal Knight's Resolve, where the damage buff will also apply to other weapons without that skill. They adjusted the visual effect of Unseen Form Spell. They deleted uh, the ragged armor set from the game, which was mistakenly obtainable in previous patch. So here's the thing. A lot of people already got this, you know, armor set. So I guess that's something you have to deal with. They also fix a bug that causes some hostile NPCs to drop frolicking finger remedy, which is very interesting. I, I've gotten a lot of these from NPCs, and I think maybe they just wanted you to just get an extra one. But apparently they didn't want you to get all that many they fix a bug that causes incorrect sound effect to play in some situations fix a bug that causes visual animation and hitboxes to not be displayed correctly on some maps they fix bugs which causes incorrect visual and behavior from some for some enemies fix a bug that causes incorrect stat parameter for some armor text fixes other performance improvement and bug fixes now these are just quality of life changes and i wanted to go through them so that you know for people who may have had some issues with them they have some kind of a you know base to or benchmark to be able to kind of look and see what's been changed. They also increased the drop rate of smithing stones for some enemies. Nice. They added smithing stones to some early game shop line, which is pretty good. They increased the shield's effectiveness. Oh, very good for people who play shield. Increase the damage for all offensive crackpot items. Very good. Increase the damage for the following items: the spark, aromatic, and poison uh, spray mist. Increase the effect duration for the following items, uplifting aromatic, iron jar, aromatic. Increase HP healing for torrent when using the, follow, the following items, raw raisin and sweet raisin and the frozen raisin. Very good. Reduce FP consumption and increase the damage of the following sorceries. Glintstone, Comet Shard, Comet, and Night Comet. Good. Some of the other, uh, in my opinion anyway, some of the sorceries did not necessarily seem like they hit really hard without you... Uh, investing so much in them you know it kind of felt like you needed to maybe get way higher and then sacrifice a lot of other really necessary stats in my opinion anyways i mean that's just how i saw it increase the damage of the following sorceries gravity well collapsing stars crystal barrage and then they decrease the fp consumption of the following sorceries star shower rock blaster gavel of hema uh, founding raising of stars star of ruin stars of ruin great blade phalanx magic downpour loretta's great bow Ooh. This is good. Decreasing the deadly, the FP consumption of this. I just got this and I wanted to use it. Tried it out and I did not like it. It just seemed like it just ate so much FP for very minimal, uh, you know, return on investment. So Loretta's mystery, uh, Loretta's mastery, sorry, carrying great sword, carrying piercer and shard spiral. They raised the projectile speed and range of the great glenstone shard. They decreased Ash of War. Hard frost stomps damage and increase the cast time. <laughs> this is a very critical change because for the you know the game so far, a lot of people have been acquiring this particular Ash of War and using it to basically go through and destroy the game. In fact, a lot of the speed runs showcased how you could just stomp the you know, the damage and run through the game. Now we'll talk about how this is going to basically change speed running for a bit, and then they increase the Ash of War bloody slash self inflict damage while slightly lowering the damage and increasing the cast time. Uh, I'm, I'm interested to see how this works. I use basically dual katanas with a lot of strength and some decks, and so I don't necessarily add too much there, and I use the Bloodhound, uh, you know, move or a step, Bloodhound step, that's what I use. I saw someone call for nerfing the Bloodhound step. Um, it was really funny to see, and I just put this comment here saying stop it because there is an enemy NPC that actually does move like that, so... I guess that's something that we, you know, need to probably have a conversation on later down the road. Then they change the FP consumption, timing of uh, Ash of War, which is the pirate's uh, charge, and then increased, I missed this one here, decreased weapon skill, Sword of Night and Flames damage. Whoa, this weapon basically has been carrying a lot of people through the game. And then they increase the FP consumption and lower duration of Ash of War Barricade Shield. They decrease the damage of Spirit Summons when using the item Mimic Tear, Ash, and change the Spirit's behavior pattern. So it might be that other uh, ashes might now seem to, you know, scale in regard to the entire balance and entire uh, behavior patterns of the different ashes because this mimic summon, uh, I was looking forward to getting it. I haven't gotten it yet, but, you know, again, I really don't want to make the game extremely easy. The game does feel somewhat fun and easy right now that I even have some ashes and I can't imagine how good that must have been. 
And so to say the version, the version number of this update is shown at a, a lower right corner of the title screen and it will be as follows app version 1.03 regulation version 1.03.1. And then it says online play requires a player to apply this update. We'll continue to provide improvement updates in the future so you can enjoy Elden Ring. So ladies and gentlemen, this is developers basically going out here and just basically putting these items and making sure that the game has a very improved quality of life in terms of balance, in terms of bug fixes. Now, regarding some of the speedruns, some people have asked questions like, so how the speedrun is going to come up with, you know, their timings and all that, but they fail to, you know, realize that they can still just use and play the game with uh, the old patches and just basically keep that as a thing for now until they explore other means of actually finding, you know, fun and interesting ways to continue to play and beat the game. But these so far are the changes that the developers have made. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you have any questions or any comments, please leave them in the comment section. I'm going to put a link to this document as well, and hopefully we'll talk very soon. Peace out.